here on a, a lovely January morning at my favorite hiking spot, Hemlock Lake in Livingston County, not far from where I live. Wanted to take a few minutes of your time to uh, talk about and hopefully provoke some conversation or at least some internal thought on um, the intellectual laziness and dishonesty that we as clinicians, as professionals, often take part in. Intellectual laziness and dishonesty, some of you might take issue with this, but what I consider intellectual laziness and dishonesty is creating a causation of a person's problem from a singular um, issue, such as weakness, such as um, trigger points, such as fascia restrictions, such as um, inhibition of muscle groups, such as a lot of different single focus type of a blames or blames that we've learned um, or maybe that we've simplified things to for the sake of moving on with a patient. I am a physical therapist in private practice in upstate New York here, and it's no surprise to many of you that I use manual therapy in the style of myofascial release as my primary intervention, but I am a massive believer in movement being the true therapeutic aspect of what I do. I, as I, as I was saying in the last one, I'm a massive believer of movement as not only what the outcome we're seeking, but the goal of what we're seeking to get a person moving again in a functional way and let them do their strengthening. If strengthening via exercise in the gym, et cetera, or in a PT clinic is their goal, then great. But I don't make it my goal to make them um, have physical therapy exercises to get stronger. I want you to get out here, right here, and live life and, and move and do the things you want to do. That's the goal of my manual therapy. Unfortunately, um, I see a lot of patients coming to me from other physical therapists with stories that um, that kind of revolve around my pa my therapist said, and as soon as I hear that, I know we're in trouble. My last therapist said that um, I've, I've got back pain because my core is weak. Now, while weakness exists when a person is in pain, is that truly the cause of their pain? Or is the problem really so much more complex than that? Um, I believe the latter. I believe that that pain and movement disorders are multifactorial. They're a cascade of issues, and our interventions are a cascade of things that we do with them, both physically, emotionally, and psychologically. Um, by saying to them that they're having pain because their their core is weak, it might be allowing you to move in or in, move into intervention without having to belabor the point with a long discussion. But unfortunately, that leaves the public with the impression that their pain is due to weakness, which is just to me, completely inaccurate. And a lot of people say, if we get them moving, I don't care, lie to them, get them moving, get them stronger, get them loading. And while well, I understand that, that's dishonest, all right? So I, I'm trying to get our shared professions to move toward a bit more of an honest approach to what's happening. And sometimes that means we need to go back and relearn or learn some of the more complex, the complexities of pain, of movement disorders, and understand that our interventions are much more than one single outcome, whether it's strengthening or working with manual therapy, trigger points or fascia restrictions or all those things. Um, the other thing that I hate to see here is when a patient comes in to see me and say, my last therapist said I've got the worst trigger points they've ever heard or seen, because I know, number one, they're lying to the patient. There's intellectual dishonesty and laziness by saying that is the problem and this is what I'm doing when I make you feel better is getting rid of those. It's so much more complex, but the patients are lied to. What about the stroke patient or the speech pathologist who comes to you with tongue weakness and you do resistive tongue exercises? It's very simple to say as a result of the stroke, you are weak and right now as I grab your tongue and I hold it and you try and pull back, we're strengthening your tongue because it's weak. At some level of simplistic simplicity, there's truth to that. There's layers of truth. But what happens in terms of return of function, return of fine motor control, return of the ability to swallow and speak, etc., is much, much more than your tongue is stronger now. Now you can do those things. It's multifactorial from the afferent feedback that goes to the brain when you do that resistance and the patient's cognition lights up and says, oh, I can do some of this stuff. And then the descending modulation of motor return happens. That's more than simple weakness strengthening. I think we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our patients to learn more about these things about these things and not make it these simple little equations of you're weak you need to be stronger that sort of thing you have trigger points we need to get rid of them understand that it's so much more than that and i think our professional benefit and our patients will appreciate not being lied to